Hey everybody, it's Brian, and welcome to the 112th tutorial with Qt and C++ and GUI programming. Uh, be sure to visit my website, www.voidrealms.com, for the source code to this and all the other tutorials. Well, I shouldn't say all. I'm missing some, and, you know, I had a server crash. If you've been following along, you know the story. So, if you're following along in this or any of the tutorials and you notice the source is missing off my site, please zip it up and send it to me, and I'll post it for everybody else to use. All right. Man, that's a mouthful. I'm going to quit saying all that. If you've been following along, um, you know this is the third tutorial in a four-part series. Um, yeah, we've built Zlib, we've built QAZip. If you haven't done either of those steps, watch the other videos. You have an original folder which has files which we're going to be working with in this tutorial, and a libs folder, and I want to populate that. All right. We populated it in previous tutorials, but I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page here. So you're going to need your, if you're on not Windows, libz.a, libz.so, and libz.so.1. Throw those in the libs folder. If you're on Windows, your life is a little bit easier because you could just go in and grab the actual DLL and the .lib and .def and throw those in your libs folder here. Now, why is there a difference between DLL and SO? Somebody's probably going to ask me. Well, ask Bill Gates. I don't know. Um, to be brutally honest, it's just a naming convention. They are just libraries. They do almost exactly the same thing, just as the different code base. All right, so now that you've got your libraries set up, we've compiled QAZip. We've compiled Zlib. Let's actually go in here and look at this stuff. Let's give QAZip another build just to make sure it builds. Okay. Now we want to grab out of our build directory all of the SOs. Or if you're on Windows, you're going to see a DLL and a .a and maybe like a DEF. You're going to grab that also. Throw those also in the libs folder. Because what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is using that library, or I should say these libraries, the libz and the qazip. If you're on Windows, those are going to say .dlls. Um, we're going to be using those in this tutorial to actually compress and decompress and have some fun with zip files. All right, so let's go file, new file of project. All right, I want to put this in zip vids, and we're just going to call this, uh, let's call it zip1. Uh, let's call it my zip1. and just put your stuff wherever you usually put it. I always, I always giggle when I say that. I'm sorry. Very immature, but... All right, now, right out of the box, we just have a very basic command line app. It compiles, it runs, it doesn't do anything special. So what we need to do here is we need to actually link to that um, QA zip in libz. One thing you should know right off the bat here is you're going to need those libraries, whether they're SOs or DLLs, you're going to need those in the same directory, whoops, in the same directory as your program. Or you're going to want to put them in somewhere where the operating system can find them in the path variable. Typically that would be like uh, uh, USR slash lib or it would be in C Windows uh, System 32 or C Windows slash system. Somewhere in the path variable where it will find them. The easiest way is just put it in the same directory as your program. Now, just because you put them in there doesn't mean it can actually use them yet. That's what we're doing in this tutorial. So crack open the project file. We're going to do a little bit of coding here. We're going to set some variables. And we're going to say QUA zip coder. Help if I can spell code. And you're going to want the actual path to that. And we're going to say zlib coder. All right, let's grab this. QA zip, QA zip. You're going to want to grab the path to this guy. And then for good measure, we're also grabbing the path to Zlib. So 
So we've got our two variables in there. And to be brutally honest, you don't really need this. You could just do your libs folder. All right, we're going to say Unix. Oops. And then we're going to have a win32. Get rid of the output window there so we can see what we're doing here. Let's say libs plus equal and we're just going to grab this zlib coder sometimes I need like background music or something like maybe circus music anyways you get what I'm saying here All right, now, one thing you should notice that this actually right here doesn't need to be that. It could and probably should be our libs folder here. Because what we're doing really is we're linking to this thing. So we can copy that. Whoops. And you can just change it if you want to. Um, it really depends on your style. Um, I like linking to the individual directories. Some people like linking all into one folder. Doesn't really matter a whole lot. All right, now we need to actually include some source files here. Include path plus equal. And we're going to grab this guy. And then we're going to say headers plus equal. Sorry, my cat just made some weird grunty noise. I couldn't figure out what the heck he was doing. Whoops. Start at H. Now, you're not going to really, in a production environment, want to include a wildcard. Because what we're saying here is headers are plus equal to this folder, QA zip, because we're using that variable. And then we're doing slash start.h. So all the headers are going to get included. And we can prove that if we just hit save. And it'll evaluate it. And then suddenly, ta da, all the headers for the QA zip are included. Now you're gonna, not going to want to do that in a production environment because if some coworker drops a header file in there that you don't want in your project, it's going to automatically get in included. And you could spend days trying to figure out what just happened. It's also a very big security threat because, well, you know, same thing. I could just inject code into your program just by adding a file. But because I don't want to sit here for an hour adding files, we're just going to do this. All right, give it a good save. Okay, so if you follow along so far, we've made two variables. The QA zip coder and zlib coder, and the paths are going to change depending on your system. We have a um, declaration here, or a declaration, geez, a branch here where we're saying if we're on Unix, grab this library. If we're on Windows, grab that library. All right, so what we're going to want to do at this point is actually just give it a good build, make sure everything builds fine. If it doesn't build at this point, you're going to have to figure out why, and this is always the nerve wracking part of working with code. I just breathed a huge sigh, huge sigh of relief right there. Um, if you get like uh, undefined reference to check your library path, many many times you won't have the library in the right path. Um, especially Windows is very fickle about that. Um, that's why I said just make sure it's in the same directory as your program here. You can see how we've got all this stuff out here. If your libraries are in the same directory, it should be able to link to them just fine. All right, now we are going to actually write some code. Now, if we run this, nothing happens. You know, we've just got a standard little little window where nothing really happens. So we're going to start writing some code. We want to do a few things here first. We are going to set up some strings. We'll say qString. 
Wow, I cannot type. And through the magic of copy and paste, I'm going to save a little bit of time here. And we're going to call this Somebody once asked me, Brian, is English your second language? Uh, no, I'm just a horrible speller. I can write code all day long, but don't ask me to write a thesis. Oh my gosh. All right, so what we need to do here is we're going to set up some variables of what we're going to be working with. So let's actually go back here. I'm going to just save some time by copy and pasting. Oh, what should we name this? Test.zip. New dir and then single file. We're just going to say original dir plus slash drunk.jpg. It's actually kind of a funny picture I found. You'll see it later. Made me chuckle. All right, so we've got a zip file, original dir, new dir, and single file. And we are going to write some code to compress a directory. And I'm going to be writing a sizable amount of code here, so I may actually split this into multiple videos. I'm not sure yet. List the contents of a zip file. And. Decompress an archive to a directory and decompress a single file. Whoops. All right, now before we can do any of that, we're going to have to add some includes here. All right, so let's just say. If you're wondering what JL compresses, it's part of the QA zip. It is this guy right here. And what he's done is this um, JL compress is actually much easier to work with than working with the individual files. I mean, QA zip has a, a ton of functionality built right into it, but it can be kind of a bear to work with if you don't really know what you're doing. So we're just going to stick with something easy for this tutorial. And we've got the headers right here, so we don't even really need QA zip open anymore. We can actually close that. All right, so first things first. We're going to set up our functions here. I love copy and paste. So what we're doing here is we're setting up a compress directory where we're going to say a zip file and a directory, decompress where we're going to say zip file and directory, and we're going to compress files, which is a zip file and a qstring list. Called files. Sorry, I was trying to juggle between you guys and my notes here. It wasn't going too well. Then we're going to decompress files. And with this, we're also going to need an extra one, qstring, the directory that we're going to do. And then we need to list the contents here. All right. I 
feel like I'm going to sneeze at any minute. Don't you hate that feeling like when your nose starts tickling and you're like, oh, come on. Let's actually include Q file here. All right, so first things first, we're going to compress a directory. So we're going to take an entire directory and compress it down into one zip archive here. So we're going to say if jl compress compressor, and you can see how it's very easy to work with. They just want a compressed file and then a directory. So we're going to say zip file directory. And we're just adding a little bit of logic here. I can hear my cat whining. Always breaks my heart. It sounds like a child crying. Could not create. All right, so what we're really doing here is we're just saying compress a directory. We're saying zip file and directory. We're calling jail compress, handing it the name of the file we want to create, the directory we want to compress. So let's actually do that right now. Let's go down here. Zip file, and we want to compress original dir. So what we're doing here is, let me bring up my file structure here. We're going to create a file called test.zip, and we're going to take this folder original and compress it down. So let's give this a good run, see what happens. And it says, created test.zip. So let's actually go out there. There it is, right there, test.zip. And you see it's got our files in there, and they're compressed. So what we're going to do now is list the contents of that. Sorry, kitty. Come on, go go bye bye. Q file file, and we're going to say zip file. Oops. And we would want to check that the existence of it. Yeah, go away, cat. Sorry, guys. Cat was messing with me. So if the file doesn't exist, we just want to exit out of there. Otherwise, what we want to do is we want to get file list. And then just list it out. We're just going to use the for each macro there. So let's actually take this and let's. Say zip file. So we're going to compress the directory and then list the contents. Let's run this guy. Created, and there's the contents, our three files. So as you can see, this is actually pretty easy to work with here. Uh, I'm going to comment these out because we don't want to uh, mess up our other ones, but we're going to decompress the archive to a directory and then decompress a single file here. Did we miss one? Yeah, we did miss one. We missed uh, compressing a single file. Hmm. All right, so let's do this. Let's back up and do a compress a single file here. So we're going to say, Jail, you guessed it, compressed files. And we're just going to give it the file name for the file. 
and then we need to give it a list of files. Now we're just handing it a queue string list, so we can quite literally just add one item to that queue string list if we want. And I'm going to, through the magic of copy and paste here, So let's actually do, 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 add it right here. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a new Q string list, and we're going to insert into there the single file variable. There we go. So if we run this now, you see how it created the zip file. We can go out there, and there's only one file in there now instead of all of them because we only added the one. Now, all right, now we're going to work on decompressing. I'm trying to kind of fly through this because the uh, the recorder I use gets a little finicky if these videos start going past 20, 30 minutes. So we're going to decompress the entire directory here. We're going to say Q string list list equal you guessed it jl compress and we're going to extract files I'm sorry extract dir because we're doing an entire directory here we're going to give it the name of the zip file and then the name of the directory we want to extract to and then we're just going to do a for each Q string item in list. We're just going to list out that we extracted them. All right, so we'll decompress this guy. What are these warnings here? Oh, unused parameter. Don't care about that. Give it the name of the zip file, and then give it the name of the new directory because we're going to make an entirely new directory here. So what we're going to do now is extract this guy to a folder called new dir, or I'm sorry, yeah, new dir right here. So we're going to take that whole content and extract it. And you can see we extracted drunk.jpg. Let's go see if that's actually true here. There should be, there it is, neuter. And you can see, oh, alcohol, the granddaddy of regret. Look at her face. She's just like, ooh, dude. And he's just laughing. That's what friends are for, eh? Uh, this gentleman, boy, what a lovely night he's going to have. An even better morning, too, eh? All right, now we're just going to finish this whole thing up. We're going to decompress a single file here. Doo, doo, doo. Come on, kitty. Go bye bye. Kitty. Sorry, guys. This cat's just like all over me right now. We're going to extract files. And notice this takes the compress file, the queue string list, and then the directory. So as you can see, I mean, once you've gotten to this point, you can very easily just work with this library, and it's just dirt simple. I mean, it's ridiculously simple to work with. So we're going to decompress files, and let's actually, through the beauty of copy and paste here, give it a directory. And we want to extract drunk.jpg. Let's actually compress the entire directory again. So what we're going to do for this last example here is we're going to compress the entire directory so we have more than one file, list the contents, and then extract a single file. So let's actually get rid of neuter, get rid of test, and then run this. And if all goes well, 
zip does not have a current file. Ooh, we made a boo-boo. So you can see we created, we got three files, but does not have current file. Uh, I'll bet you anything it's because we have, yep, capital D, lowercase d. If we change that, lesson learned, ta-da, extracted. So we have created, we've listed, we've extracted. If we go out, sure enough, that file's there. Um, in case some of you are wondering, kind of in this on a positive note, what these other files are. Meanwhile, in Oregon, guy chasing a fish across the road. And a very clever top secret, bottom secret. All right, well, that's all. Um, I hope you found this series educational and entertaining. Um, there is one more video I'm going to do where instead of using the actual uh, QUA zip library, we're going to actually use his code embedded into our program so we don't have to juggle around two libraries, just one. That's all. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this educational and entertaining.